the Paris Agreement was signed by 196 countries in 2015. And the deal was this. Try to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees, preferably to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. It's the focus of all climate action everywhere. But are we past the point of no return already? Uh, so, Kate, to you first of all, at the moment, according to the UN, current global action plans are, are, are prompting a rise in emissions. That's what they're predicting. So, are, is it possible to keep this idea of 1.5 alive, do you think? Yes, absolutely. I think that we need to be absolutely clear that the climate crisis is definitely coming to a head. The time is up. We know that governments need to act now. And, you know, what they're promising right now simply isn't enough. The cuts are needed and this has to change in Glasgow. I think every country in the world knows what needs to be done and they just need to get on with it. What we hear from Boris Johnson, and let's face it, the UK has a special role in being the UK president of the COPs. We need to be leading by example. And what we've heard this year is a lot of talk, a lot of targets and very little action whatsoever across all sectors. And we okay. really need that to change both at home and around the world. Stuart, I've seen you nodding a lot there. I suggest you might nod as well to what Antonio Guterres, a UN Secretary General, has said as well then. Much bolder climate action is needed, is essentially what he's saying there. And the Energy Transitions Commission has put out a report with six actions that it says can keep 1.5 alive. But we know a lot of it, don't we, already. What is going to make the difference and make people act, do you think? Well, I think, first of all, keeping 1.5 alive is really important because that, for me as a consumer, if I, if I feel we're getting there, we can get there, I can buy into it. I agree with everything Kate said there, but we've got to see strategic plans for every government department, whether that be on agriculture, energy, transport. We've really got to see action uh, on the ground. We've got to see, uh, we've got to start to reduce our reliance, our addiction on fossil fuels, take those big actions actions, as Kate said, and I'm fully behind everything she just touched on. Well, and the government will probably say we've got more plans to be revealed coming down the line, as we heard from Hannah Thomas-Peter earlier on. But it's interesting you talked about personally buying into something. I just, um, Stuart, Kate, what do you think? I mean, is this all about governments and corporations doing their bit or can we make a difference as individual consumers? Briefly, if you can. I think as individual consumers, that's really important, but also as individual campaigners, we can all take action um, through NGOs like Greenpeace, who are also calling on urgent action from governments. And we can all have a part to play, not just as consumers, but as as political beings, if you like. There's a lot to do and everyone needs to take part. And a quick word in 10 seconds, Stuart. Do you agree individuals can make a difference? Uh I do, I do, and politicians do, but also the parts of the economy, such as farming, with our net zero 2040, we're okay. already there and we want to go further.